Telltale Games, a studio with a conflicted history. Go back to 2012 and the Game of the Year winner was The Walking Dead, a game developed by Telltale Games. They also won Studio of the Year at the same time. The Walking Dead video game was critically acclaimed as one of the best written video games of all time, providing the player with a decision-based storyline that contained shocks and twists. Fast forward two years and the most successful TV show in recent history, Game of Thrones, gave Telltale Games licensing permission to use their brand for their new game. It also featured guest appearances from Kit Harington, Leanne Heddy and even Peter Dinklage, among others. The studio would go on to make games until 2018, when their studio was closed down. They would be immediately purchased by someone who tried to resurrect the gaming studio, but until this day, they've barely released a game in the past 6 years. So, how does this happen? How does a game studio go from having the best video game of the year, to securing the rights to the most popular TV show of its time, to then disappearing off the face of the earth? Well, today we're going to cover that and find out what happened to Telltale Games. Quick side note, today's video is sponsored by me, so please consider subscribing, we need less than 100 more subscribers to hit 1500. Anyway, back to the video. The best place to start is in the beginning. Telltale Games was an American video game developer based in California. The company was founded in July of 2004 by former LucasArts developers Kevin Bruner, Dan Connors and Troy Molander. Telltale established itself to focus on adventure games using a novel, episodic release schedule over digital distribution, creating its own game engine, the Telltale Tool, to support this. Telltale's initial successes were on games using intellectual properties with small but dedicated fan bases, including Sam and Max, Wallace and Gromit, Homestar Runner, and Bone. Around 2010, the studio gained more lucrative licensing opportunities in more mainstream properties such as Back to the Future and Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park released in 2011, and although IGN gave it a poor score of just 5.5 out of 10, the general feedback from consumers was that the game was a decent experience. Back to the Future received more favourable scores, with IGN giving it a 7.5 out of 10, and it's received 4.6 out of 5 stars on Google overall. Although these games were received as decent entries, it was the 2012's The Walking Dead game that would go on to be Telltale's breakout hit. It introduced a more narrative-directed approach that diverged from the standard adventure game of point-and-click gameplay. The Walking Dead gave the player the ability to make choices that had a huge impact on the story and the characters within. This allowed the players to create their own story and determine how events would play out. The Walking Dead game was a huge success, winning Game of the Year in 2012, beating out many established IPs such as Halo 4, Borderlands 2 and Mass Effect 3. This was the moment that elevated Telltale Games from a small unknown studio into the limelight. The game also went on to sell 28 million copies worldwide. The game was incredibly well written and featured a full cast of voice actors who lent themselves to their roles well. The game cast us as Lee Everett, a convicted murderer on his way to the big house. However, before arriving at the station, the zombie apocalypse breaks out and the car he was being transported in is flipped over. After escaping and finding a house, Lee meets a young girl called Clementine. The plot revolves around Lee, us, the player, looking after Clementine as if she were our own child. Although we will meet other characters and make other decisions throughout the game, the drive to look after Clementine is the main force that keeps us hooked to the game. I won't spoil it too much, but if you haven't played this game, honestly go and give it a try. It's still one of the best story games I've played, but the characters and writing are the parts that make this game as successful as it was. Every decision felt like it had a major impact, and it usually did. This gave the game a lot of replay value, but it also made the game extremely tense, as it made the player really consider every time they had to make a choice. Whereas previous games from Telltale would let you choose every line of dialogue, this wasn't the case here. In The Walking Dead, you choose, and the game moves on, adapting its story to each decision. This was what made the game so special. 
every player is tasked with the same goal of protecting Clementine, but how it gets done may be completely different for each player. I might choose to befriend someone that you hate, and you might choose to leave someone that I took. Every choice made has an impact that will come back to rear its consequences at a later point in the story. With five episodes to work through, the game was revered as one of the greatest storytelling games. At this point, Telltale was growing as a company and established themselves as a competitor in the gaming industry. A year after they released The Walking Dead second season and Tales from the Borderlands, their next major installment was The Game of Thrones. Now at this time, Game of Thrones was the biggest show on the planet. It was a global phenomenon and world renowned. The show was also at its peak in 2014, which is when Telltale Games managed to grab the licensing rights to its brand. They would go on to create a five episode storyline that correlated with the fourth season of the television show. They created a family of fictional characters, each placed on a different part of the world map. One was at the Night's Watch, the other was in King's Landing, and another was at the City of Marine. It followed the exact same model as The Walking Dead and Borderlands in that it would be decision-based gameplay on the same engine as the previous two games. It wasn't just the brand that stood out, but the actors that were involved. The game featured cameos from Kit Harrington, who plays Jon Snow, Amelia Clarke, who plays Daenerys Targaryen, Peter Dinklage, who plays Tyrion Lannister, and Lena Headey, who plays Cersei Lannister. This wasn't just a spin-off, they managed to bring the actual star-studded Game of Thrones experience to the table. Although all the boxes appear to have been ticked, the game was not received as well as expected, with average scores of 65% being received across the board. Some complained that although the game was enjoyable, the game was very buggy and almost appeared unfinished. Also, the decisions that the player made actually had very little impact on how the story played out. Although they gave the illusion of choice, when replaying the game, players noticed that not much changed each subsequent playthrough, which was a huge difference from the Walking Dead game. I guess one could argue that due to the show already having a set plot, there wasn't as much room for creativity, but at the end of the day, it let players down in that regards. The studio left the game on a cliffhanger, hinting towards a second season, but that day would never come. But it goes to show how respected the studio was and how big its reputation had become. Every game studio would have loved to have been the ones to get the rights to the Game of Thrones IP and the actors during its peak, but Telltale Games were the ones to get it. After the Game of Thrones game, the studio would go on to release Minecraft Story Mode, another two Walking Dead games, two Batman games, and a Guardians of the Galaxy game as well. In 2018, they released The Walking Dead Final Season, and that's when things would take a turn for the worse. Although we have discussed the huge successes of The Walking Dead series, the sad truth is that Telltale Games were never able to reach the same peaks as they did with the first season of The Walking Dead. Furthermore, stressful crunch times, creative meddling and other structural problems at the development studio created a more stressful work environment for many of the developers that were tasked with making the new game content, sometimes having to create full episodes in mere weeks. In 2017, co-founder Kevin Bruner stepped down from the company and the company laid off 90 employees. Bruner said, The time has come to pass the reins to someone that can better drive Telltale to the next level and realize all the potential that is there. Pete Hawley, the former VP for games at Zynga, was announced as the new CEO. Hawley would begin a restructuring of the company, which led to those 90 terminations, which was about a quarter of their total staff. Hawley stated that the changes were for reorientating the organization with a focus on delivering fewer, better games with a smaller team. In June of 2018, former CEO Bruner filed a lawsuit against Telltale in relation to his departure, citing financial damages as he had been seemingly removed from the board of directors and thus could not gain information related to Telltale's financial status in anticipation of selling off a portion of his shares from the company. Telltale Games called the lawsuit baseless and stated that the company was working hard to turn around the decline that it had experienced under Bruner's stewardship. In June of 2018, 
Telltale announced a partnership with Netflix for the streaming service to provide its games to subscribers, and this allowed Telltale to use the rights to a game using the Stranger Things brand, which would have been a huge boost to their motivation. The Stranger Things game would have been used to bridge the gap between the show's story between its second and third season. Suddenly, on September 21st of 2018, CEO Pete Hawley announced that Telltale Games was undergoing a majority studio closure, with around 90% of its present workforce, that's 225 of just 250 employees, being let go that very same day. A core team of around 25 employees remained to fulfill the company's obligations to its board and partners, which included completing the Minecraft Story Mode project for Netflix. According to Dan Connors, the studio had been ready to close for another round of financing when their last major investor pulled out. The company executives had to make the decision to end all production as soon as possible without this investment. Although it was never specified who pulled out of the funding, it's believed to have been Liongate, who were the major investor that withdrew. It was also reported that AMC Networks, who owns the right to The Walking Dead, were considering investing in Telltale, but in the end, they also pulled their funding. Dan Murray, a president of Skybound Interactive, which was working with Telltale for The Walking Dead games, said, we knew some of the challenges that Telltale were facing, but when the news hit so suddenly, everybody was taken off guard. Hawley stated, It's been an incredibly difficult year for Telltale as we worked to set the company on a new course. Unfortunately, we ran out of time trying to get there. We released some of our best content this year and received a tremendous amount of positive feedback, but ultimately, that did not translate to sales. With a heavy heart, we watch our friends leave today to spread our brand of storytelling across the games industry. Those who were let go reported that they were given no warning, had to leave the office building within just 30 minutes of the company's decision, received no severance and only had a limited amount of time on their healthcare benefits. Melissa Hutchinson, the voice actor of Clementine in The Walking Dead games, said that the news came in the middle of a recording session, which they had to immediately end. Telltale did not officially comment on the status of its in-progress games, including The Wolf Among Us Season 2, Game of Thrones Season 2, and the untitled Stranger Things project, but laid off employees alleged that teams working on these games had all been let go. On September the 24th, Netflix announced that it is in the process of evaluating other options for bringing the Stranger Things universe to life in an interactive medium, meaning that they had lost the rights. Telltale did still release the second of four planned episodes of The Walking Dead, but narrative designer Rachel Knoll stated that her team within the skeleton crew was also laid off, and that there were not many people left at the company. Telltale saw assignment proceedings begin on October the 11th of 2018, working through Sherwood Partners to liquidate all the remaining assets. And so ends the story of Telltale Games. Or does it? Well, not quite. You see, following negotiations with Sherwood Partners starting in February of 2019, LCG Entertainment acquired several key Telltale assets and on August 28th of 2019 they announced that it was relaunching the company by assuming Telltale Games as its trade name, operating out of Malibu, California. Under the leadership of founders Jamie Otterley and Brian Waddle, the new Telltale was set to re-release the old back catalogue, as well as work on new games based on Telltale affiliated properties. While licenses for games and planned games like The Walking Dead and Stranger Things had since reverted back to their original owners, the new Telltale retained the licenses for The Wolf Among Us and Batman, as well as the intellectual property for Puzzle Agent. Certain licenses previously held by Telltale had reverted back to the original IP owners. Minecraft went to Microsoft, Marvel went back to Marvel, The Walking Dead went to Skybound, Although Telltale retains the right to its original games, it won't be able to develop new games for licenses that it lost since the company's closure in 2018. That means no Minecraft, no Marvel, and most importantly, 
No Walking Dead, which helped catapult the company to success in the first place. The story doesn't end there though. Telltale Games has been revived and The Wolf Among Us 2 is back in development, with some of the original developers and voice cast returning too. Former Telltale developer Ryan Benno said in an interview that it definitely won't be the Telltale that was there before the closure. It's been too long now and a lot of people have moved on. Telltale Games isn't coming back. A company bought our assets and I'm still working through the trauma of our company closing and I'm missing my friends every day. So in summary, Telltale Games grew from a small studio and found huge success in 2012 when they released The Walking Dead Season 1. They had record sales, won the game of the year, studio of the year and this catapulted them onto the main stage. They would go on to acquire huge IPs such as Game of Thrones, Batman, Stranger Things among other things but they would never be able to hit those same heights that they'd hit in 2012. They had to rely on the brands of these huge IPs and never created their own stories without already established brands. As their company continued to downsize, their releases became fewer and fewer, and when all of the major funders pulled out, it left the studio in a situation where they had to close their doors and release their employees. Although they have now been reacquired and established, at this point they have lost all of their major licenses, including their main hit, The Walking Dead. But just recently in 2023, they released their newest game, The Expanse, which has been well received, averaging 88% user feedback. At this point, this is the first major release since they were reacquired and it appears to have gone down well with the fans. Maybe, just maybe, they will be able to get back to where they were before, but it will take time and dedication to rebuild and heal those wounds that were felt before. I personally have loved all of the Telltale games and their approach to storytelling. I'll be right behind them, rooting for their success. Anyway, that's it for this one. What do you guys think? Which was your favourite Telltale game? Do you think they could have done anything different? Have you played The Expanse and how did you find it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked the video, please consider giving it a like. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I'm Av Gaming, where we do video game analysis, identifying what makes great games great and what could make good games great as well. Thanks for watching, Av out.